So Denis Kucinich, of all people, went to Syria to interview Bashar al-Assad for Fox News. Boy, that's strange. Man, and by the way, I mean, can you find a stranger collection of two folks? Strange bedfellows? They're not bedfellows. Denis Kucinich is simply asking him questions. But it is an awfully interesting room, let's put it that way. They also went with Fox News' senior foreign affairs correspondent, Greg Polcott. But it was Kucinich doing the interview. And what made it even stranger is Brett Baer, when he was introducing the interview on Fox News, said, Now don't get us wrong, Dennis Kucinich is not a uh, journalist and does not represent Fox News. Then why did you send him? Okay, so <laughs> incredibly strange to begin with, before we even get to what Bashar al-Assad said. So now let's go to that. Can you tell us now, do you have chemical weapons or don't you? Well, when we, uh, joined, uh, when we joined the treaty last week, it means that we have, and we said, we said that. So it's not a secret anymore. So there we have it. At least we have a confession that they had it all along, which of course they had it. Well, somebody in Syria used it. That's absolutely been confirmed by the United Nations, and we already knew that they had a large stockpile. But on the other hand, look, all these things matter because we thought Iraq had chemical weapons and it turns out they didn't. <laughs> By the way, part of the reason they didn't is one, they destroyed some of it at our behest and two, they had used some of it at our behest against Iran during their war. So now look, at least the good news is, yes, Assad is acknowledging Syria does have it, I albeit in his goofy French accent. Uh, let's find out more. First of all, regarding what Obama and Kerry said, I dare them to say that we said no once. We never said it. You, n you uh, never said no, no, no. We well, never well, said. We never said. Now. We never said no. We never said yes. Can we you always say, say yeah? But we always say it's classified issue. We don't have to discuss it. And if we want to talk about it, we say if. And if means you, can, you may have it, you may not. So this is blatant. So he's saying when President Obama and Secretary of State John Kerry said you lied about not having chemical weapons, he says I didn't say that. I challenge you to find a place where I said I didn't have chemical weapons. I just didn't answer the question. I didn't say yes. I didn't say no. I didn't say oui. I didn't say no. Okay. Now, look, that's a very lame excuse, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge that we do that all the time. There's a lot of secrets that the government has. They don't say yes. They don't say no. They don't acknowledge it at all. Now, of course, we're supposed to be significantly better than them. We're a democracy. He's a dictator. All right, let's find out more. They say it's just a stalling tactic. Is it? Well, a stalling tactic, well, what's it, to join the agreement? But yeah, that you're just stalling right now for time, that you really don't have any intention of going along with the plan. Are you well, stalling? When you join the agreement, you have mechanism, and you have to obey these mechanisms. And according to the history of Syria, we never made agreement with any party in this world, and we didn't fulfill uh, what we have to do. So is it a stalling mechanism? To some degree, of course, of course it is. But look, you have to understand that whenever you have an agreement, both sides don't get exactly what they want, right? So we're still threatening strikes if he doesn't follow through. Now he wishes, of course, that we didn't do that. And apparently he's already missed the first deadline for reporting some of the weapons. So we'll have a lot of that drama and nonsense as we go along. It doesn't mean you shouldn't make the deal. I think it was a good deal. I'm glad we made it. I'm glad we averted the war and that we're going to take chemical weapons out of Syria. It's just there will be these moments where it's frustrating and you'll have Assad going around saying, what, me? Delay the deal? I do not know what you are saying. All right, now finally, they're going to talk about uh, all the expense and time it takes to destroy these weapons. Can you just destroy these chemical weapons uh, quickly? And if not, why not? I think it's a very complicated operation technically. And it needs a lot, a lot of money. Some estimated about a billion for the Syrian stockpile. We're not experts in that regard, but that's the estimates that we've had uh, recently. Uh, so quickly depends, uh, you have to ask the experts what do they mean by quickly, because it has certain schedule. It needs a year, maybe a li little bit less or a little bit more. So maybe a little more, or maybe a little less than a year, and by the way he says it costs up to a billion dollars, and he asks whether the U.S. is going to pay that bill. So, uh, oh boy, yes, there's no question they'll drag this out, but in the end, Russia definitely wants them to do this deal, and they got nothing if they don't have Russia's support. So in the end, yes, they will comply as they continue to be a pain in the ass throughout. It's just, look, I know I can't get beyond it, but it's such a weird 
you know, dichotomy here that we've got this guy who's clearly a brutal dictator, over 100,000 killed in the Civil War, and he looks like such a goofball and has such a goofy accent that you're like, this is this mass killer? It's this disconnect, and it seems so bizarre and surreal. Kucinich being in the room as the non-reporter asking the questions on Fox News makes it doubly surreal. This is one of the craziest, most interesting interviews I've seen. So take it for what it is. And at least we got to find out a little bit more about Assad's intentions. And, uh, and I don't blame Kucinich at all. It's, he's right to take the interview. And, uh, and he did a good job with it. Asked the right questions. And at least we have more information now.